Hi folks, thank you for checking out my video and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to do a walkthrough on how to install an oxygen sensor on a 2011 V6 Toyota Camry. Stay tuned and I will walk you through the whole process. So as you can see there, my engine check light came on and also the traction check light came on as well. So I'm going to use a scanner to see what's going on in my car. This is the scanner I'm going to use. I bought it a long time ago, so it does come really handy. To use the scanner, you simply plug this interface here into the plug there, like so. So here's the code. It says P0051, heater control circuit low, bank two sensor one. Well, let's find out where bank two sensor one is underneath the hood. All right, let's take a look under the hood. So this is my V6 Toyota Camry. As you can see here, I already removed all the push clips to remove the panel so we can see what's going on underneath there. And then I'm going to also remove this as well. So this is a V6 engine. Now the code says that it's bank two sensor one uh, let's figure out where the banks are for a v6 engine for this particular camry there are two banks the first bank is here it has three cylinders uh, three spark plugs going to the combustion engine and underneath that there is a catalytic converter that will handle the uh, exhaust gas coming from this bank bank number two is here but sensor one is up here as you can see there so that is sensor one. Sensor one handles the upstream exhaust gas coming from the engine. So it measures the oxygen level from the gas and then uh, transmit that information to the computer so that the computer can give it the right amount of fuel and air mixture for the combustion chamber. And then you have sensor two, which locates behind the catalytic converter that measures the gas coming up from the converter and tells the computer that the converter did its work and then continue the cycle and allows the computer to continue to provide the right amount of air and fuel mixture to the engine. That's the gist of it. Bank one is there, bank two is here, so we're working on the bank two and uh, sensor one. So it looks like it's going to be crowded here. I'm not going to be able to take the sensor out unless I have the right tool. So I'm going to go to AutoZone nearby or O'Reilly and get the sensor and the tools to remove these things here. Before we move on, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Aura for sponsoring this video. Aura provides high quality and comprehensive services in protecting you and your family from online threats such as identity theft, financial fraud, and more. If you go online and search your name on Google, you'll be surprised to see how much of your private information is out there, such as your home address, your date of birth, your cell phone, will show up on displays on various data broker sites. Just think about it. Your private information is out there for grabs. Anyone with bad intentions, like cyber crooks, scammers, can take that information and do so much harm. Now, data brokers are required legally to remove your information from the website if you ask them to, but they make it so difficult to do so. With Aura, using the cutting edge technology, they can identify these various data broker sites that have your information and put in opt-out requests on your behalf. So that was just an example of what Aura can do. They can do so much more to protect you and your family from online threats that you can't even see. With Aura's comprehensive service features, it's really easy to set up so you don't have to download several different apps to get things like credit monitoring, antivirus, VPN, password management, home title monitoring, data broker removal, and more. With Aura, you can get everything at one affordable price as you see here. Let Aura do the hard work of keeping you safe online. Don't let people continue to exploit and profit off your private information. You can go to aura.com slash DIY potentials for a two weeks free tryout. I provided the link in the video description below. Again, I would like to thank Aura for sponsoring this video. All right, folks, so I just got back from the auto shop here and uh, I got myself the new oxygen sensor. And let's open it up here. When you shop for 
the Austrian sensor, you have to be really careful in terms of which one you pick. Make sure you talk to the salesperson and uh, get the right parts. Uh, they gave me this one here for bank two, sensor one. They call it upstream. That means the sensor is located before the converter, uh, which you saw earlier. So it has some sort of greasy stuff in there to make sure that when you plug it in, it's easy for you to uh, remove it if needed. So the sensor comes with four wires, two for signal, the other two wires are the heating element. And that's what the code was saying, that the, the heating element is low. It does need to be heated up to a certain degree for it to function effectively. And that's why I'm getting the engine check light because the heating element in here is not working properly and it's showing that it's not heating up. So here I have the oxygen sensor socket kit. So what it is here is you have the socket, it's cut away like so. So this way it can fit through the wires like this and then to, uh, you can crank it and, and remove it. If you use a regular socket, it probably won't fit because of the cable and the length, you know, of the sensor. And they also provide it here as well. This one fits as well. Depending on your situation, I might have to use this one here. I think this one might be too long for the space, but we'll see. With that, let's go out there and remove the, uh, the old one and plug this in. Again, limited space here. As you can see, the oxygen sensor is right there. So in order to give me more room, I'm going to have to move this panel here. I'm using a 10 millimeter socket. There you go. Make sure you place this where you can find it. Same thing there. Cool. So here, the cable here is attached to the clips there. Remove that. And also, there's an upper part here as well. Remove that as well. Right, so you can remove this air intake. As you can see now, it gives you a little bit more room. Here's the hose to the uh, radiator. So you have the sensor cable here, strapped to the coolant hose. And then it goes to here. You see that there? So you just have to disconnect that and also take it off from this clip as well and then you can uh, unscrew it from there. Okay, to remove this from the plug, you have to pinch the back and then kind of remove that like that, all right? Right, so you also need to remove from the strap here as well. Yeah, you just need to uh, remove this from there. So now the oxygen sensor cable is off, then now I can have access to it. Before I remove the oxygen sensor, I'm going to remove the battery first. When you disconnect the battery, you want to disconnect first the negative terminal, okay? Right there. And then the positive afterward. Just move it out of the way here like that. Once you put the battery back on, you want to connect the positive first and then the negative, so it's the opposite. To remove the sensor, I'm going to see which one of these uh, three sockets is going to work best. So this one, it's longer, but I don't think I have, um, as you can see here, it won't match my tool. And this one will match my tool. See how it fits the cable there, like that? But I think it's too low. So I'm going to use the longer socket here. Just fit it in like that. There we go. And it looks like I'm going to need an extension. I'm going to use the extension because again, it's too low. There we go, much better. Okay, I'm gonna need a longer, longer wrench here because it's too tight. All right, folks, so fortunately I have a longer breaker bar here. So let's just try this. All right, let's see. Wow, it's really tight. 
All right, folks, so I can't get it off using the longer breaker bar. So fortunately I have a um, impact tool here. So I'm gonna use the power of uh, electricity instead. Position it, boom. Came off, so I heard it moved. There we go. Yeah, look at that. Pretty old. So now we're going to replace this with the new one. All right, folks, so here's my new sensor and here's the old sensor here. Now this does come with some sort of protective grease, as you can see here. So this way, if I need to take it out later on, it won't be as hard. As you can see here, it's all rusted here. I did do a comparison and the new one is a little bit longer, just slightly longer, which is good because this way it, it's not too tight. And you know, when you get vibration, it doesn't pull away from the plug. Cool, so let's put this in. Using your, your hands first. Clockwise. Now I can feel the grip, and then I can finish it off with with the right tool. So now I can use the socket, wrench socket here to tighten it up. There we go. Cool. So after that, you can plug this in into the plug there. So this should fit in there, a plug right there. Yeah, so this is one way in and one way out. And I wanna make sure I hear it snap. And I kind of put my fingers behind the plug there, the connector and push it in from the front. So you can hear a nice snap to make that electrical connection. Uh, the length is perfect, so it gives it a little leeway. So put the strap back on. So now you can put the air intake thingy back on, like so. Put the connector here. Snap this other one in, in place. So next is your battery. When you connect the battery, you want to plug the positive first. So you want to make sure everything in the car is off, the lights are off, the AC is off, because you don't want any kind of sparks that will take place here when you uh, connect. Yeah, there'll be some sparks, but you want to reduce it. But if you have something on, you know, uh, chances are it's going to create a spark. And you want to reduce that as much as possible. Yeah. See that no sparks because I turn everything off in the car. That helps. The next steps now is to put this panel back on. Put this cover back on. Boom. Nice snap. All right. So with that, I'm going to turn the engine on and hopefully the uh, engine light will come off. I think it's going to work and I'll let you know if it doesn't. Okay. I'm going to turn the engine back on. Okay. Oh, look at that. Engine light came off. The tire pressure is on, but that's been on because the, uh, the tire pressure battery ran out. So as you can see here, it did the work. It did the trick. That's amazing. I'm happy. Let me turn this off. So that worked out like a charm and uh, I'm glad it did. The engine light is no longer on. If you find this video helpful, please give me a like or consider subscribing. I have a number of DIY projects on my channel that many people found to be really helpful. Please check them out. Uh, again, thank you for taking the time and I hope to see you again soon.